So my name is Anirudh Mehta and uh, I will be discussing how to get uh, good marks in chemistry by preparing from your PYQs. Okay, so uh, if I want to start with this, your pen, okay. As you all know, chemistry is of three parts, physical, inorganic and organic. First, I will tell you what are the tips to crack organic chemistry. What are the tips I could give you to crack organic chemistry and guess, get the best marks out of it is number one, make sure that you buy a new notebook and keep few partitions in them. In that new notebook, you are going to mention first thing, all the named reactions. Okay, take two pages, three pages, write all the named reactions which are there for your syllabus. Okay, because direct questions come from the named reactions. In the second partition, you can write all the oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Which type of oxidizing agent is used to convert uh, which compound to which compound? And same for the reducing agent. And third partition, after writing these, you can write the distinction tests. Distinction tests. These three are one of the most important topics uh, from where many questions get asked in the NEET, in the organic chemistry part. At least one reaction, one question from the named reaction directly comes. Oxidizing agent, reducing agent, two to three questions every year gets asked. Distincting text, uh, distinction test also two to three questions get asked in the match the following types as well. Okay. Uh, you can watch our videos which are uploaded regularly on this channel. In that we will discuss how to remember all these things in detail. Okay. This is just a tips and tricks video. So, I will not be discussing much of the uh, subject here. Okay. Then always practice. This is the first thing that you can do. Then after that you should always practice organic chemistry by using flow charts by using flow charts. So, whenever you study any chapter, any topic, all the reactions that you have studied, okay, all the reagents that you have studied, make sure you write them on one page, complete chapter you can summarize within one page and that single page will be more than sufficient for you to, you know, remember the chapter forever. If you don't know how to make a flow chart, I can help you with this. In the same way, you need to make the flow chart yourself for the other chapters. Let me help you with the flow chart of chapter aromatic hydrocarbons okay let's say we want to study the reactions of benzene so i need to know what are the methods to reach to benzene and what are the reactions shown by benzene so methods of preparation of benzene i want to know method of preparation whatever five six methods that are there which are important we can see and then from benzene where can we go what are the reactions of benzene which are important to remember it takes at max 5 to 10 minutes to revise a particular chapter if you know how to draw the flow charts smartly. So, this is what we call smart study. The whole chapter of uh, benzene you can just revise within 5 minutes. What are the methods to prepare benzene? You might have studied in the alkanes. If you start with hexane, you can do aromatization using Cr2O3, Al2O3 and heating it at high pressure. You have seen in the chapter alkyne that from the ethyne I can do cyclic trimerization using red hot iron tube at 873 Kelvin which will give us benzene. Okay. Then you have seen in the chapter alkanes that decarboxylation by soda lime. So, if I start with benzoic acid I can do decarboxylation by soda lime NaOH, CaO, heating. These are all the methods you can use. You can take more examples like starting from phenol you can add zinc dust and do the reduction by zinc dust. So, so many reactions are there which you can do and lastly if I want to write one more I can say I can take Grignard reagent phenyl magnesium bromide and I can do its hydrolysis or in the last chapter when you study. So, all the reactions which are there which wherever you have seen how to make the benzene all the reactions you should mention on one page something like starting from the diazonium salt starting from the diazonium salt you can do its reduction by h3po2 
post-phenic acid. Okay, so all these reactions are the ones which can help you to revise this particular chapter within two minutes I have taken. All the reactions which ben benzene shows, we know that benzene being an aromatic system mostly show electrophilic substitution reactions like nitration HNO3 H2SO4, nitration where NO2 plus will be the nucleophile, uh, electrophile, this electrophile will substitute a hydrogen here. So, we are going to get nitrobenzene. You can do sulfonation for that you use fuming concentrated sulfuric acid where benzene sulfonic acid will be formed. Okay. You would have seen halogenation reaction where you use halogen in the presence of AlCl3 where the halogen can be introduced. This halogen can be chlorine or bromine. All the important points that are there you can write in next to them. If you want iodination, you use I2, HNO3. Like this, you can just write all the reactions that you can think of by looking at the notes first or NCRT first. Then later you can revise them every single day. I would suggest you to draw these lines and everything by pen, but write all the reagents and the reactants and the products using pencil. So you can erase them as well. And when you want to practice it, uh, every week you, you should practice all the chapters of organic. It is very simple. If you really want to learn organic chemistry, if you really want to understand organic chemistry, all the reagents should be on your fingertips. Okay, For that, more the number of times you study it, more you will get it. So I would suggest before going to the NEET, if you have made these flowcharts at least 10, 10 times per chapter, 10 times per chapter I am saying, then I am 100% sure you will not miss a single mark in the organic chemistry. Like this, so many things you can do. I have just written few examples. You can do Friedel-Craft alkylation. You can do friedel craft acylation. So many reactions are there. You can do. Just I, I have just given you a gist of how to draw a flowchart. Okay. So this is what about organic chemistry I can tell. I have told you a few things. Named reaction, keep them on one place. Learn them, revise them. Oxidizing agent, reducing agent. How to remember the oxidizing and reducing agent also I could tell. Something like you can write that what does LiAlH4 does? What does hydrogen nickel does? What does the other, any other reducing agent like zinc HCl does? So you can write what are the reactions they show like LiLH4, it converts your carboxylic acid to alcohol. It converts aldehydes to alcohol. It converts ketones to secondary alcohols. All those reactions which you can, which you have already seen in your notes or in the NCRT, you can just write all those reactions at one place. Okay, like this. Where, wherever it will work. And wherever it will not work, you can write it as a note point. Same thing how hydrogen nickel works, how NABH4 works, how zinc uh, in the presence of HCl works. All these type of reducing agents and oxidizing agents you should keep in one place. Okay, now starting with the next part of chemistry which is going to be physical chemistry. What are the tips? What are the tips that I can give you so that you can score better in your physical chemistry part? Many of the students who are preparing for NEET uh, feel scared while doing the physical chemistry questions because you are not habituated of the, uh, doing all numericals and all. But uh, I would suggest that numericals are generally not asked much in NEET nowadays. Mostly the questions are coming from the theoretical parts match the following questions. So I would su suggest you to at least learn all the definitions. Many PYQs are coming from definitions. How to draw graphs you should know. Any question coming from the graph, you should be able to tell. Like 2024 NEET question was, what is the ln k versus 1 by t graph from Arrhenius equation? This question had come. So if you just remember the Arrhenius equation, which is rate constant is a into e to the power minus activation by rt, you could have drawn this graph by taking the log here. So basic mathematics, if we remember, we can easily draw this graph as y equal to minus mx plus c. So, it will be a negative slope of Ea by r and an intercept of lna. 
So definition type of question, graph type of question are very important. And also just like in the organic chemistry, I said make a flow chart. Here you make a formula chart. So buy a separate notebook, small notebook just for the formula chart. It will help you a lot to solve the questions within no time. Okay. Something like when you are doing pH calculations, you can draw all the pH formulas that pH of weak acid, strong acid, pH of salts, all those you can put it on a notebook and revise that formulas every week at least once. Okay. For the important chapters like equilibrium, you can draw formula chart. Thermodynamics, you can have a formula chart because many different formulas are there. Most of the times, we do silly mistakes of taking wrong sign conventions or putting wrong formula when they are asking isothermal process reversible, but we are putting the formula of irreversible isothermal process, getting the wrong answers there. So those type of mistakes you want, if you want to avoid, you make sure that you practice all the formulas at one place and formula chart of solutions chapter, very important. Every year the question are coming from the concentration terms. So the concentration terms interconversion formula chart is very important like how to convert molarity to molarity to weight by volume percent into 10 by molar mass how to convert molarity to weight by weight percent into 10 into density by molar mass like that these are all the formulas you should obviously look at how to convert molarity to molality molality is thousand times molarity by thousand time density minus molarity into molar mass. So many formulas are there like this. Watch the videos if you are self preparing, but if you are already preparing at some institute or in Chaitanya, uh, make sure that all the notes you are doing uh, correctly and making a formula chart here like this and revising them every single week. So these are things which will help you in physical chemistry, maintaining a formula chart, learning all the important definitions and giving proper focus on the graph type of questions. Okay. And then finally, we'll talk about the inorganic chemistry. In inorganic chemistry, the father of all books, NCRT. Make sure you're reading, reading the NCRT for inorganic chemistry at least six to seven times before the need. Okay. So whatever time you have from now on, you have sufficient time so that you can read the whole NCRT six to seven times. And whatever the tables are there in the NCRT, those tables are the most important one. You make sure that you make proper orders out of those tables. Like in the table, they have mentioned the melting point. Okay, in the table, they have mentioned the EMF values, SRP of metal from plus two to zero, all those things, you should be able to make the orders from there and it will help you and you can make simple flow charts for your salt analysis topic. Flow chart for the salt analysis topic. So salt analysis topic, as you know, is added uh, in the last year only in the NEET. So it's a little new topic for you. Make sure that you study the basics of salt analysis by making flow charts, which you will find in your uh, Shri Chaitanya modules and also you can find the videos which we have already made on this channel. Just go back in the channel in the uh, recent videos and see the salt analysis video. Okay, so that's all we can uh, do from the chemistry part. I hope it has helped you and you make sure that uh, you are preparing well for your exam. All the very best and uh, best of luck. Thank you.